It's that time of year. Oscar season. My favorite time of year, except not at all because the Academy pretty consistently chooses the wrong movies. But uh, sometimes they're right, you know. Uh, so even though I don't agree with them a lot of the time, I enjoy predicting who is going to win and what is going to win each category. And uh, just uh, going through them and seeing if my predictions are right. And I'm going to say who I would pick to win, uh, but also who I think will win. So first off, we have the list of Best Picture nominations. So we have Ford vs. Ferrari, The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, Marriage Story, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. Now, in my opinion, everyone's saying that 1917 will take it because obviously there's a lot of buzz around the movie. It's a war film. It's quite Oscar Beatty. You know, it took home, just today, uh, at the time of recording, it took home the BAFTA Award. Uh, it took home the Golden Globe. Um, but I'm I'm just skeptical. And I'm also <laughs> extremely hopeful that um, something else will win. Not that I hated 1917. I actually enjoyed it, but I don't think it's uh, the best of the bunch here. The realistic side of me is thinking that I should say that 1917 will win, but I actually think Parasite will win. I was surprised last year when um, Green Book won over Roma, because obviously you have this really authentic story coming from a director with this like incredible vision. The fact that they chose that over Roma was actually a surprise to me. Um, because when I think back, I know the Academy has a pretty terrible track record, but at the same time, they did pick Moonlight over La La Land, uh, however many years ago that was. So I was thinking they would pick the more genuine story. Because when I think about Green Book, it's enjoyable, but to the people that that story is, is closest to home to, it didn't really, um, jive well with them. The racism from the producer and the accusations of the white savior narrative. Overall, I thought that was a surprise um, because Roma was pretty universally acclaimed. So I'm hoping they'll fix their past mistakes and they'll pick Parasite. In terms of who I want to win, even though I preferred Little Women and Marriage Story uh, over Parasite this year, even though I absolutely loved Parasite. I still want Parasite to win because I think that would be so exciting for Korean film to finally be recognized by the Academy. So yeah, Parasite. Parasite will win. Okay, so for actor in a leading role, uh, no contest. Joaquin Phoenix will win. I don't think anyone here stands a chance. Adam Driver winning would be fun. I haven't seen The Two Popes and I haven't seen Pain and Glory, so I can't comment on those two performances. Leo winning would be fine, but I think uh, Joker's got this one. It is a good performance. It's the strongest aspect of that movie, which I'm not a massive fan of. I guess who will win? Joker. Who I want to win? I guess Joker, but Adam Driver would be funny <laughs> because no one would be expecting it and he deserves it too. In terms of actress in a leading role, I'm going to have to give that to Renee Zellweger because... I just feel like movies like that always win uh, best, uh, you know, leading actress. Uh, even though I thought Judy was a fine movie and Renee was fine, uh, I personally would give it to Saoirse Ronan, but I just don't see that happening because these, <laughs> you know, celebrity biopics always tend to maybe not win massively in other categories, but the lead tends to always win. So, Renee Zellweger will win, but I want Saoirse Ronan to win, even though she probably won't. Okay, actor in a supporting role. I think they'll give this one to Brad Pitt. That's what everyone's saying. That's what has been happening in award shows recently, leading up to the Oscars. I think they feel like they owe... Brad Pitt, the Oscar for Moneyball, and I think they're going to give it to him for this, and I'm fine with that. I thought he was great in uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, so who I think will win is Brad Pitt, but in terms of who I think <laughs> deserves it the most, 
or at least I would find um, the most entertaining, is Joe Pesci. I thought that performance in The Irishman was pretty great. It was fun to see Joe Pesci back in a movie by Martin Scorsese, or just a movie in any capacity. It's been a long time. Unless you count A Warrior's Tale. It'd be fun if Joe Pesci won, but he won't. <laughs> okay, for actress in a supporting role, everyone's telling me it's going to be Laura Dern. She just took home the BAFTA. She's taken home, like, every award under the sun. But you know what? <laughs> Screw it. Florence Pugh will win. Florence Pugh will win. She won't. But she will, in my heart. So I'm going to say, Florence Pugh, I think she'll win. And I really, really want her to win out of all these people. I thought she gave the strongest performance. Those initial screenings of Little Women, everyone was talking about... Florence Pugh's performance and how she totally steals the show and elevates a character that some have considered quite annoying. I think Florence Pugh's going to take it, but realistically, it sh I should probably be saying Laura Dern. But I'm hopeful because I think Little Women's release date is closer to when the Academy started voting than Marriage Story. And when I think about the Golden Globes, I'm pretty sure that she wasn't even nominated. Also, the Academy is not a massive fan of Netflix. In fact, that's one of the reasons I think Roma lost to Green Book is maybe the, the Netflix connotation. So I think maybe there's a chance that other award shows have less of an issue with Netflix, but the Academy will be reluctant to give the award to an actress in a Netflix movie, but this is just me being hopeful. I just hope Florence Pugh wins. So there you go. Now, best animated feature film. Even though I just said that uh, <laughs> the Academy hates Netflix, I do think that Klaus will take this one. I was surprised by the lack of a Frozen 2 nomination and instead they opted to give that kind of <laughs> final spot to How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, which was a, I think critically was well received enough. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, didn't do that well at the box office, but hey, neither did Missing Link, and that took home the Golden Globe. But I think I think Klaus is going to win it because I feel like people in 2019, 2020 are feeling particularly nostalgic for like a 90s-esque Disney Renaissance-esque kind of <laughs> style um, hand-drawn animation movie. And I know Klaus isn't entirely hand-drawn. It's a mix of CG and like hand-drawn style animation. Even though I think every aspect of the movie was kind of dull, uh, the story was dull, the music choices were dull, I thought the, the animation was like astonishingly amazing. The character animation was phenomenal. I think the Netflix Association is gonna... The Academy isn't gonna care about it as much because to me it seems like the clear winner here. So I think Klaus will win. In my opinion, Toy Story 4 is a lot better than all of these movies here. I haven't seen Missing Link and I haven't seen How to Train Your Dragon, but I have seen I Lost My Body. And I did like I Lost My Body quite a lot, that, but that's definitely not winning. And I did actually prefer Toy Story 4. So I'm actually gonna say Klaus should win, Toy Story 4, I want to win. I thought I'd just quickly jump in here and say, sorry about my camera dying. But uh, I'll try and make the video a little bit more visually interesting from now on, so you're not just stuck looking at a page on my web browser. All right, for best cinematography, we have The Irishman, Joker, The Lighthouse, 1917, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It's definitely going to be 1917. It was the strongest aspect of the movie, obviously the biggest selling point of the movie is Roger Deakins' amazing camera work and how he made the movie look like it was shot in one take. Yeah, 100%, 1917's taking it. Even though I would prefer if The Lighthouse took it, because even though I have my fair share of complaints with that movie, I thought the cinematography was absolutely amazing, so atmospheric. I'm honestly so surprised that The Lighthouse was even nominated. I thought the Academy would hate that movie, but I'm glad it's getting the recognition it deserves for its strongest element. All right, costume design. We've got The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I think the Joker inclusion is kind of weird. The costumes were pretty standard. I guess the Joker's costume is cool. He's a clown man. Joker's not getting it. Uh, I doubt Irishman will get it. I think it comes down to Jojo Rabbit, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Little Women. Personally, I think they'll give it to Little Women. 
it totally deserves it. I wish Little Women was going to get more love in other categories, but um, I don't see that happening, except a few more here and there as we continue to scroll down, I'll mention. But yeah, I think they give it to Little Women, but also Once Upon a Time in Hollywood has some pretty fantastic costumes as well. And so does Jojo Rabbit, but I, I don't see Jojo Rabbit happening for some reason. So I think Little Women will get it, and I want Little Women to get it, so there you go. All right, for directing, we've got The Irishman, Joker, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. Everyone's saying Sam Mendes will win this, but I'm skeptical. So in terms of who I think will win this, I think it'll be Parasite, Bong Joon-ho. Just everybody loves that guy in terms of his personality and, and everyone is pretty appreciative of um, his amazing direction. It definitely will not go to Todd Phillips. I will be not happy. <laughs> about that because I think Joker is well directed enough, but the dullest directed movie out of all of the options here. Uh, it would be cool to see Martin Scorsese get it, but I don't think the direction was as striking as Parasite or 1917, or for that matter, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And I also don't think Once Upon a Time in Hollywood will take it either. So who I think will win, Parasite, who I want to win, Parasite. All right, for film editing, we've got Ford vs. Ferrari, The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, and Parasite. I've seen all of these except Ford vs. Ferrari. I couldn't bring myself to sit through two and a half hours of that movie. I'm sure it's not bad, it just doesn't really look appealing to me. I think Parasite will win. I know I'm just constantly picking Parasite, but that's just who I think will win here. I could see the Irishman winning, maybe. Joker will not win. I just think Parasite had so many like well executed sequences, all thanks to like the amazing editing. Yeah, will win Parasite, want to win Parasite. International feature film, it's gonna be Parasite. Just internationally, and particularly in America, it's just blown up. I feel like if France chose Portrait of a Lady on Fire instead of Les Mis, maybe it would be more of a contest, but not really at all. I've heard Les Mis is good, but I haven't seen it. I've only seen Portrait of a Lady on Fire. So yeah, want to win Parasite will win Parasite. So in terms of makeup and hairstyling, we've got Bombshell, Joker, Judy, Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, and 1917. It's not going to Maleficent. I don't think anyone cares about that movie. It didn't do well at the box office. No one saw it. I don't think it'll go to Joker. I can see Bombshell stealing the nom here in terms of just how they, I guess, transform these uh, performers. Nicole Kidman, etc. I don't know. Judy could also win it as well. They did an amazing job with the lead. 1917, I doubt it. I think it will be Bombshell and probably the only nom Bombshell gets. All right, best music, original score. Randy Newman, Randy Newman, Randy Newman. It won't be Randy Newman. Uh, it will be Joker um, because Joker won the Golden Globe and it's, you know, that score, people are talking about it. I don't think it's particularly interesting. I think there are a couple of tracks which are really effective and creepy, but for the most part, didn't really do much for me. I think 1917's soundtrack is good. I like Thomas Newman a lot. I feel like the movie would have benefited if it played with like diegetic sounds a lot more than it actually did. I don't think it's gonna go to Rise of Skywalker. Star Wars always gets nominated, it never wins. And even though it's John Williams' last Star Wars film he's composing for, I don't think it'll happen. And Little Women would be nice. I, d I did really like that soundtrack, but Overall, I think it's gonna go to Joker. Everyone's talking about it. It worked well for the movie. Joker will win, but I wish Randy was winning because the Marriage Story soundtrack was amazing. Ugh, I just, uh, Randy Newman, I love him. I love him so much. Everything he does, he, um, he's amazing. All right, best original song. Uh, there's no Glasgow from Wild Rose, so sad day. Uh, <laughs> I thought that was gonna get nominated, but it didn't. So we've got obviously the song from Toy Story 4, uh, Into the Unknown from Frozen 2, Stand Up from Harriet, I'm Gonna Love Me Again from Rocket Man, and I'm Standing With You from Breakthrough. I was surprised that Frozen 2 wasn't nominated for Best Animated Feature, but I'm also glad that it's getting some kind of recognition. I didn't hate Frozen 2 at all. I actually probably preferred Frozen 2 to Frozen 1. And I actually think Into the Unknown winning would be nice. <laughs> because Let It Go One 
and Into the Unknown is a million times better than Let It Go. So I think Into the Unknown will get it. And uh, I guess I want it to win as well. The song from Toy Story 4 was fine, but not one of Randy Newman's best songs for, you know, a Toy Story movie. All right, production design, The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Parasite. Uh, I think it's going to go to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Just the way that they like recreated 1960s Hollywood was amazing. And the biggest draw card of the entire movie and probably the reason it's so enjoyable is because of how affectionately replicated the whole world of that movie is. So Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I want to get it and will get it. Best animated short film. I've only seen Hair Love and Kit Bull. I haven't seen Sister. I haven't seen Memorable. I haven't seen Daughter. I preferred Kit Bull, but I know that a lot of people liked Hair Love and thought it was a surprising animated short to come out of Sony Pictures. I think it played before Angry Birds or something. Angry Birds 2, <laughs> which is weird. Even though I didn't love Hair Love, I think they'll give it to Hair Love. I haven't heard much about these other movies. I like the art style of all of them, to be honest, especially Sister. Like, what I watched the trailer for that. That looked really neat, but I haven't seen them, so I can't comment. But I'll just say uh, Hair Love will win in terms of who I want to win. Kit Bull was cute. <laughs> Maybe Kit Bull. <laughs> okay, short film live action. I've seen all of these except Saria. Uh, I've heard that Brotherhood is the most likely to win. I thought it looked pretty nice, you know, really well shot, but I thought the story was kind of contrived and relied a bit too much on characters withholding information because the plot had to do that. I thought Nefta Football Club was uh, really funny. <laughs> it's not gonna win, but it was cute and dumb. And uh, there was a donkey in it with uh, headphones, so I liked that. Neighbor's Window was well shot. I don't know, I wasn't moved by it in the way that I think the the short film expected me to be moved by it. The best one is definitely A Sister. It's genuinely really intense and well paced and, and works really well for a short film story. So I'll just go for A Sister. I think A Sister will win and I also want it to win. However, I'm, I'm sure Brotherhood will win, but I think Sister's gonna win because it's better than Brotherhood. So there you go. Hey, how's it going? It's me from the future. I'm back, the camera's back on. So essentially, I just thought I sounded like I was falling asleep in the audio I'd recorded a few days ago. So I thought I'd just re-record these next few categories, try and liven up the video a little bit and also go, go through them quite quickly because we are taking a while to get through them all. So I guess these two sound categories, sound editing and sound mixing, won't spend too long on them because I don't know enough about sound mixing and sound editing, but I'll just say that I think either 1917 or Ford vs Ferrari will win. I'm more leaning towards Ford vs Ferrari, even though everyone thinks 1917 will win. From what I can gather about the movie, the use of the diegetic sounds, the, the revving of the motors, etc., and the, you know, the heavy reliance of, of score in 1917 might be maybe a big thing that affects 1917 from winning because, you know, the score is so overbearing, but from what I can gather about Ford vs Ferrari, the score is less of a thing in that movie, but I'm not sure, I haven't seen it. I guess I don't really mind who wins because I don't know enough. However, I think it would be fun if Ad Astra won for sound mixing, because even though I have my fair share of complaints with that movie, lots of people really love it and it would be awesome for it to get some kind of recognition. It would just be cool, it'd be an unusual pick, but I feel like out of all of the nominations for sound mixing, it is the least likely to get picked. Okay, best visual effects. We have Avengers Endgame, The Irishman, The Lion King, Ew, uh, 1917, and Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. I can see either Avengers or Irishman taking it. The Irishman obviously has some of the most revolutionary visual effects we've ever seen in a movie. And even though I thought the de-aging for the most part was quite effective and looked quite good, I do think that there were a few moments in the movie where some actors looked a little unusual, to say the least. Um, but for the most part, it's passable. And you know, it's it's impressive technology. I could see Avengers Endgame taking it. There are a lot of big scale battle sequences that look 
fun. The Lion King won't take it. It's stuck in a bit of a weird limbo where it can't be nominated for best animated feature because of kind of the way they marketed it and it doesn't really fit into that slot. But also it doesn't really belong here either. I found The Lion King quite dull looking, almost gross looking at times, so I don't think it'll go to The Lion King. 1917, it could, but there are lots of great, um, you know, uh, practical effects in 1917 as well. And then we've got Star Wars Rise of Skywalker, which looks good, but I don't think we'll get it. I don't think Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker will get any love at the Oscars. All right. I'll be quick, snappy, snappy. It's, this video is too long. Okay, we've got best writing, adapted screenplay. I think Little Women will win this. I also really want it to win this because the script is absolute genius. I finished watching the movie and I was like, oh my God, the way that they revised the novel to essentially fix the ending that a lot of people have problems with and essentially give an in-canon explanation as to why the ending was that way in the original novel in the first place. It's like so meta in the best way possible and also it doesn't ruin the ending either. So I would definitely give it to Little Women but you know I like the screenplay for The Irishman. Jojo Rabbit's cute. I think it could go to Jojo Rabbit as well but I'm just gonna say Little Women. Uh, I really hope it wins. It was phenomenal. The screenplay is phenomenal and Yep. All right, finally, final category, best original screenplay. I think it's going to go to Marriage Story, probably. I don't think it'll go to 1917. I think the screenplay in 1917 is not very good. Parasite screenplay is great, but there obviously is a language barrier, so that maybe might prevent it from getting a screenplay related award. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I can't see that getting it because so much of that movie is, you know, it's great. It's very atmospheric, but it doesn't rely on dialogue a lot of the time. That's the point of the movie. Um, not that the screenplay is bad, but it's just not a whole lot of screenplay in the movie, in my opinion. However, there are some pretty fantastic scenes. So Knives Out is who I would love to win, even though I preferred the screenplay in Marriage Story and Parasite. Knives Out winning would be pretty awesome because I think this is the only category it's nominated for, but Ryan Johnson definitely deserves some recognition from the Academy. I don't know if he has in the past. I don't think he has. I just think it'd be fun if he won. So I'll say will win Marriage Story, want to win Knives Out. So that's all the categories. I'm not going to waste your time anymore. Maybe I'll make a follow-up video after the Oscars happens to talk about what I got right and what I got wrong. But I guess see you later.